In this presentation, we will fill out Form 941, Employer's Quarterly Federal Tax Return for the fourth quarter. We're going to start off with the EIN number and the address. Support accounting instruction by clicking the link below, giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website, broken out by category, further broken out by course. Each course then organized in a logical, reasonable fashion, making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a YouTube page. We also include added resources such as Excel practice problems, PDF files, and more like QuickBooks backup files when applicable. So once again, click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it. The EIN number typically different than the other normal reporting number that we would report with. Depending on the type of entity, our normal reporting number for recording the income tax could differ for a sole proprietor, a partnership, or a corporate corporation in other words. The EIN number will then be a more standard number when just reporting the payroll for the Internal Revenue Service. We're going to be dealing with the fourth quarter, the quarter of October, November, and December. Remember that the quarter has the three months in it uh, here for the fourth quarter, 12 months divided by three, three months per quarter, last quarter of the year. This is a busy time for us at this point, the end of the year here where we have to do the 941s, the 940s, the W2s, the W3s, and put this all together. If we scroll back down, we're going to go through our information. The first cell here, the first uh, line in part one, says number of employees who uh, received wages, tips, or other compensation. And for the fourth quarter, as of uh, December 12th, fourth quarter, we had four employees. Wages, tips, and other compensation. Remember that this really uh, lines up to the federal income tax. So we're kind of looking for the FIT wages, tips. So if we go to our worksheet, and we scroll back down. I've frozen the panes up top, so freeze panes by going to cell A4, going to the View tab, and then the freeze panes and freeze the pane. Then we're going to scroll back down to our data that we have compiled at the bottom. Got the data for the third quarter. We've compiled the third quarter data and we've compiled the data for the totals, which are now populating for us automatically. So if we double click on this, is populating all of the totals for each month of operations. However, what we need is the fourth quarter. So we're going to add Q4 here, and we're just going to add the months related to the fourth quarter. And then we'll, we'll do the calculation here. That's going to be October, November, and December. And then we'll copy and paste this across. So within cell F40, we're going to say equals, and we're going to scroll up to October. The totals for October is going to be here in F40. 23 and say plus and then scroll down to November in F uh, 30 and plus and then scroll down to December in F 37 and enter. So there's our, our three months. Now if we if we want to check this we can highlight these two numbers. Excel will then calculate it down here 240,411 that matches our total which we calculated by summing up all the months so it looks good. So now we're going to highlight that cell. I'm going to copy it. Right click. Let's copy that cell and copy. And we're going to put that over here in the data all the way. We're going to select all these empty cells for the fourth quarter. Right click and paste. Uh, it shouldn't matter. We can paste one, two, three or normal pasting or not one, two, three, but either formulas or normal pasting. And that should do what we wanted. If we want to check any of these, it's probably best just to check the net check over here. If we highlight these two, it adds up to the total of 141,976,23, which looks like that number. So that looks good. So now we need to make sure that we're picking up the right data now when we fill out our form. So I'm going to go ahead and make, we're going to pick up this data. We don't really need this over here. I'm going to highlight all this data. This is what we're going to be using to fill out our form. And I'm just going to right click and let's make that green. Make it like a light green, a nice light green. Okay, so now I'm going to scroll down just so that's the only data we can see. And that's the data we will use. So I'll scroll back over. There it is. It looks fantastic. 
Okay, so we were looking for the FIT wages. And that's going to be the total earnings here, less what would be deducted from it, which would if would be the 401k retirement. And if uh, if the if this was a cafeteria plan, which it is not, then we would deduct that as well. So here we're just going to deduct the 401k, the retirement plan. So if we take the calculator here, we're going to say it's the 144232.5 minus the 8322.5. Uh, point six and that'll give us the 135 909.9 .9. we'll go back and populate our our worksheet with that so back to our worksheet we're going to populate with 135 comma 909 tab 90 okay so now we want the federal income tax withheld now remember that the federal income tax withheld really has nothing to do with this number because uh, it changes per employee. So this is just the sum of all the all the wages, but uh, we can't apply a flat rate because everybody has a different rates and they have different withholdings and allowances. So all we can do is tell the IRS, hey, you know, this is what we withheld. So we're going to go back over here and say, what did we withhold? And we withheld for the FIT, that's 25. So I'm going to put that in the calculator so we can see it. Two, five, oh, undo, undo that. So it's uh, 25212.4. So that's what we're going to be using. I'm going to go back to our 941. So we withheld 25212 tab 40. All right, now we want the social security wages, which will differ from the federal income tax wages. So we'll go back to our worksheet. We're going to pick that up here. We have a separate column for the social security wages. Now, the reason it's going to be different is that we had that one employee, Judy Jones, that's going to hit the cap. She's probably like the owner here making the, you know, the most of the money. So she hit the cap and therefore stopped having Social Security wages at that point. And so we have less of a Social Security wage there. Also note that if there is a qualified cafeteria plan, which this is not, then it, it could differ for that as well. So those are some reasons why uh, the OASDI wage could differ from the total wage as well as the Medicare wage. So we're going to pick up that 97. So it's going to be 97632.2 that we'll put over here in our 941. 97 comma 632 tab 50 cents. We'll multiply that times the 0.124 which again probably isn't a percent that's been drilled in your head if you've been working this whole problem as is the percent of 0.062 and that's our social security for the employee and employer portion if we multiply it times two to take care of both employee and employer portion at one time that's our 0.124 which we will then multiply it times 97632.5 to give us the 12,106.43 so here we're going to put down the 12,000 comma 106 tab 43. You may not recognize that number from our worksheet here as well. And that's because it's going to be the employee portion, this number, plus the employer portion, that number, which adds up to 12,106.43. So that could be a little confusing when we go back and forth from the 941. Back to the 941. We have no tips, which is nice. Don't like dealing with tips. And then we have the tax Medicare wages here. So we're going to go back to our worksheet. Now the tax, the Medicare has no cap. So we're just going to pick up total earnings. When would it differ from total earnings? If there was something to be deducted from total Medicare, such as a cafeteria plan, um, a qualified cafeteria plan, which is a section 125 plan. So we're just going to pick up total earnings, which is going to be this uh, 144232.5. And we're going to pull that into our worksheet. It will be 144, 232, tab, 50 cents. We'll multiply that times the 0.029. You might be saying, well, where does that come from again? We don't recognize that percent. We probably recognize 0.0145 if we've been doing this whole thing. And if we multiply that times two, we get 0.029 so it's the employer and employee portion represented in the percent format times the amount of 144232.5 that gives us um, 4182 so we'll put that 4182 over here 
So we got four comma, one a two tab seventy four. Next, we've got add uh, column two from lines five a, five b, five c, five d. So we're just gonna add these up then. It's gonna be good times. So we gotta pull the calculator calculator out. Column two, we're adding up uh, twelve one o two one o six point four three plus four one eight through two point seven four sixteen two eighty nine seventeen. So that's going to go here in E5. That's going to be 16, 289, tab 17. Okay, so then we have a section uh, 3121, notice and demand. Uh, we don't have anything there, We're leaving it blank. Next line is going to say total taxes before adjustments. Add line, uh, we got 3, 5E, and 5F. So we're going to add up, in other words, FIT. Social Security and Medicare, which we've already combined together here. So it's going to be the FIT 25212.4 plus FICA taxes, Social Security and Medicare of the 16289.17, given the 4150157. So we're going to put that here. 41, 501, tab 57. Okay, then, then we have some adjustments. If there's any pennies off, if we're off by pennies, they're going to allow us to make an adjustment for the pennies that are off from the deposit to the liabilities, which is nice. We're going to scroll on down to line 10, which is total taxes after adjustments, which will remain in our case 41, 501, tab 57. Then we have the qualified small business payroll tax credit. Nothing for us here. Then we have the total taxes, which will be the 41 comma 501 tab 70 or 57 uh, okay uh, that should be 41 41 all right line 13 uh, then is going to be the deposits okay so remember this is the liability now so we're telling the IRS hey this is how much we owe we recalculated it you can see how we got to it now we're gonna tell you what we actually paid you and it should be the same because we've already made the payments. This is an information form. Hopefully there will be nothing due because um, it should just be an information form. So to get the payments, we'll go back to our worksheet over here. Now it's not gonna come from the register. This is telling us what the liability is. This doesn't tell us when we paid. We have to go back to our, our journal entries to see where the payment happened. We can go to the GL, we can find the cash payments that happened. So if we go to the GL, we see our payments over here. Uh, we're going to have to break out more detail, however, because we've grouped the payments together. Uh, so we're going to have to go to the journal entries and see where these payments are. And we can see that we made a payment on 11.1, or sorry, we made the payment on 11.15. Uh, and this payment was made for the pay period ended October. So the October pay period was paid with this check which represents the amounts for OASDI, HI, and FIT, Social Security, Medicare, Federal Income Tax uh, for October. So it was made in November. Uh, uh, it was made in December for the taxes and liabilities of October. And then we had one in December that we made this payment for the activity that happened in uh, November. And then this payment was in January of the next year but it was paid for the payroll period into December of the prior year. All right, so those are, those are gonna be our payments that we need to pick up. Now it's gonna include, these, these payments only include FICA, uh, the FICA taxes and FIT, which is exactly what we want. That's what we're calculating here. You'll note that it doesn't have, as does the prior pay periods, FUTA and SUTA involved, which makes things easier. Why not? Because all four of our employees have have uh, reached the cap already and therefore don't have any FUTA or SUTA at this time. So that, that makes it easy. We can just pick up these numbers. It's gonna be this number, the cash check we paid for uh, Social Security, Medicare, and federal income tax, this number, the amount we paid, and this number, which adds up to 4150157. We can do that again in the with the calculator just for the fun of it. It's always nice to Punch things into the calculator. 15760 plus 14321.59 plus 
and let's see if we can find that last number which is right there plus another 11419.98 and that's going to give us the 4150157 did i add that up yep okay so now we're going to take that number go to the 941 and it should match this number which it does 4150157 so our story so far internal revenue service this is our liability you can see how we got there this is how much we deposited to you uh and, and therefore we don't owe you anything right now if you want to see more support about this number the actual deposits we made then we're going to fill out this second form the 941. now we're a quarterly depositor so we may not need it but i want to just show you this form just to show you the the support the more detailed support type form that you can have so we're going to say it's the the fourth quarter here and we just got the three months that we're going to be dealing with and we're going to break out all the payments for the three months we only have one because we're quarterly and we're monthly payroll uh, processors but if we were weekly or bi-weekly or semi week monthly we would have more than one payment most likely so to do this we're just going to go back here and we're just going to pick up each of these individually each of these payments so for the first payment that was applied to the first month it was made in uh november but applied to october is this 15 7 uh 15 7 60. so i'm just going to memorize that one here this time <laughs> then we're going to go back here and actually we're going to go back here it's going to be the 15 comma 7 60 and 90 cents that's our only payment so if we sum that up it's going to be the same over here 15 comma 760 and 90 cents so then we're going to go to our next payment that happened in the next month uh yeah it happened in december we made the payment in december for november and that's going to be the 14 321 just double check this payment actually there's no 90 cents there i don't know where i got that 90 cents. i'm going to go back there's no 90 cents, no 90 cents, just, okay, my memory's not good. Okay, so then we're going to go back over here. Now we've got December, we're going to pick up this 14-321-59 that was made in December for November. So we'll pick that up, that happened in our second month. So that's going to be here, it's going to be 14, comma, 321, tab, 59. Now that's going to be our total because it's our only payment. 1, 4, comma, 321, tab, 59. Okay, then we're going to do this one more time for the last month of payment. Happened in January of the next year. That's when the payment was made, but for the last quarter or month, December of the prior year. So that's the 11, 4, 19, 98. So we'll go back to our data uh, here. We're going to say that was... 11 comma 419 tab 98 that's our total as well which will be 11 comma 419 tab 98 okay so now we'll just add these up and it should come out to our total if we have done this properly so we're going to say 15760 plus 14321.59 plus Let's see if we could find that last number there it is there's the last number plus 11419.98 enter 4150157 i think that sounds familiar i think that's what we wanted 41 comma 501 point oh, tab 57 that number should then match what's on the 941 so 941 41501157 so we're basically saying that this will give the support and if the irs wants to know uh, what checks we have written we can say hey here's the checks here's when we wrote them you should be able to find them on your end and if they can't then we go through and match off check by check and try to see one did the checks clear on our side if they did then the irs deposited the check and two if that's the case and we still can't find them did the irs apply the check to the wrong time period meaning possibly it wasn't for example this check here maybe and it could be our fault maybe we maybe we applied it in the form when we made the payment 
to January of the next year when it should have been applied to December of the prior year. So those timing differences in applying the payments to the proper place is commonly the problem that will happen. So then we just need to make sure that we have it all tied out and um, this form can help us do so.